Hello, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today I'm standing here in my kitchen and I wanted to share with all of you how many appliances we have and what we decided to keep when we decided to become more minimal. If you're new here, my name is Shannon and make sure you hit the subscribe button to join my channel. I've had this question quite a lot and that is, what do you keep in your kitchen and how many appliances do you have? What have you decided to keep? And this is going to be different for everyone because you're going to eat different types of food. Maybe you're really into cooking or preparing food. Maybe you're not. Maybe you eat out constantly. So this is gonna be different for every single person, but I wanted to share with you what I changed in our kitchen and what appliances we ended up keeping. The first thing that I switched out when we became more minimal, and this was because we actually needed to replace our blender, it had just broke, I decided to get an all-in-one blender that would also be a food processor. I ended up getting this Ninja, and this is something that we use every single day and normally we use it several times a day because I drink a smoothie and my husband drinks a smoothie and then sometimes the kids drink a smoothie. So this we use constantly and it is also a food processor if you are to get this part of it. And so by replacing our blender with this all-in-one system, I was able to get rid of our broken down old blender I was also able to get rid of this giant prehistoric food processor that was handed down to us years ago and took up a ton of space. So now this is what we have. By changing to this Ninja, I was able to get rid of two things and replace it with one. And the only reason why I did that is because we actually needed to because our old blender broke. So I'm not advocating going out and spending any money I like to just replace things as they break down. Another thing that we use constantly is our electric kettle. And my husband and I use this several times a day. We make our coffee with this. We make our tea with this. We also use this to make boiling water a lot quicker. We can just boil this first and then add it into the pot and it goes so much quicker that way. Because we've had one of these, I realized I didn't need to have my traditional kettle that I can put over the flame. If there was an instance where we did not have electricity, I have plenty of pots and pans that I could boil water in and pour that into a cup. So I felt very confident that I could get rid of my two traditional kettles just because we never use them and just stick with this electric kettle which we've used for years. We also rely on a toaster. We eat tons of toast so this is being used so many times throughout the day. Before we started to become more minimal, we had this and we also had a toaster oven. I found that this was much quicker than the toaster oven. The toaster oven took forever to heat something up and we rarely used it as an oven. We just used it to make toast. So I decided to keep this. This is a four piece toaster. We have a lot of people here and we eat everything at home. So I decided to keep this one and get rid of the toaster oven. I just found we weren't using the toaster oven enough and again, it was just taking way too long to make something. So I was, I've been happy with that. We've been living with just this for quite a few years now and it's working out really well. I don't know if you can really call this an appliance, but we have this Brita water filter. In our previous house, we had a water filtration system that I hooked up under our kitchen sink. But in this house currently, as the kitchen is set up, there's not enough room to have one of those under our kitchen sink. So we bought this and this is doing pretty good. I would prefer to go with a different system only because you have to change these cartridges and it seems like you have to do that quite often and that seems a little wasteful to me. The water where we live is perfectly good. We feel that it does have a slightly odd taste to it, but by putting it through this extra filtration system, it gets rid of that weird flavor. So I really like this. I do recommend it because it does a really good job. It makes the water taste a lot better. But at the same time, I really wanna to go to a more permanent system in the future. We have a hand mixer for when I do baking. We got this when we got married in 2011, so it's really 
just stood the test of time. It's in perfectly good condition. And whenever I need to mix something, this is perfect for us. We don't do enough baking where I feel we would need one of those giant mixers that you have to keep somewhere. This really does the job for us and I'm perfectly happy with this little hand mixer. For coffee, we normally use instant coffee, but we do have a French press as well. So this is another thing that we really like to use when we want a stronger cup of coffee. It's super simple and it takes up barely any space at all. We also have this tiny microwave. Eventually when we redo our kitchen, we'll get a built-in one, but this does the job for now. I keep looking around our kitchen to see if that's all the appliances we have. We really don't have many now that I've pulled them all out. And honestly, when we first started decluttering, I did have quite a few more. And there were a lot of things that I was just never using. For instance, we had a crock pot and I would use it maybe once every other month, but I was keeping it just in case because I kept thinking, what if we have a party and we need to heat up food? And honestly, since decluttering that item, I've never needed the crock pot, not one time. And I find most meals that I would cook in the crock pot, I can easily do in a pot or pan. So I'm not saying to get rid of your crock pot, especially if you use it, that's amazing. But if you're not using it and you feel as though you might need to keep it just in case, I would just think about if it's worth the amount of space it's taking up. For us, it really wasn't worth it. Also, I try to stay away from trends. I know everybody is into that Instant Pot, which is completely fine. Again, if you're using it, I know those can take the place of a crock pot. You can do slow cooking and fast cooking, but for us, it just doesn't make sense because our track record is anytime we get those kind of things, a wok or a rice cooker or say the Instant Pot, we just don't use it that often. And for us, in most instances, it's just as easy to cook something in just a regular pot or pan. I am not that busy where I need to set something up and leave it and come home to a cooked meal. Probably if I worked out of our house, I might need to do that. But for us, I just really thought about what we truly use and what we can get rid of. That brings me to this final object. This is a bread maker. So when we first started to become more minimal declutter, I decided to actually purchase this bread maker because I wanted to save money on bread. We go through so much bread in this house and bread is packaged in so much plastic. I find where we buy it from, it's double plastic. So you get the plastic the bread comes in and then usually it comes in a larger bag and of course we still buy bread, but when we bought this, I started making our bread and it really cut down on how much bread we had to buy. Now, this is what I wanna discuss really quick. I have not used this in six months and there are some reasons for that. And this is why I feel you cannot put a rule that can apply to every single thing in your house or every single person. Because the reason why we have not used this in six months we moved here six months ago. So we had all the turmoil of moving and getting acclimated to this house. And then we have been doing updates in this kitchen for at least the last three months. So in that time, I have not had it in my head that I really want to bake bread. I just haven't had the time and I have not wanted to do that. Now that we're more settled, I'm super excited to get back into bread making. I actually just made some sourdough starter and I'm really interested to see how that's going to work and come up with some recipes for this bread maker. I actually have a blog post on some bread recipes that I will link down below in case you're interested, but I wanna get back into using this. So when it comes to trying to figure out what to keep and what to declutter, Think about if you actually want to use the item. Then I would suggest trying to use it, and if you find yourself using it, great. That's when you should keep it. If you find yourself not wanting to use it or trying to use it and saying, this is not for me, I don't like it, that's when I would declutter the item. So I'm gonna see if I can get back into this, and I know I will, but if I don't, 
I will be donating this or selling it, um, but I know I'm going to because I just made that sourdough starter and I'm really excited about it. You can read more about this on my blog as well as see photos of our kitchen, the before and after, and everything we've been working on. I will link that in the description box below. I'm also linking my Amazon store in case you're interested in seeing the prices of any of these items or if you actually need anything that helps support me. Thank you so much and I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye. But this is why I don't think you can put a blanket, blanket, blank, blanket, blanket.